So yesterday we asked the following question. Parshas Korach. So yesterday we left off with a question where Korach, they spread rumors on page, uh, what page is it? Um, page. 821, 820. 820. Oh, wow, I'm way behind. Page 820? Okay. So on page eight twenty, thank you. So it says uh, in the fifth pasuk, it says, "Vaikalu al Moshe al Aaron vayomer alehem, Rav lachem ki kol aida kulam kedoshi v'socham Hashem, ubadu atis nasu al kal Hashem." Now, first of all, the Gemara says. Oh, by the way, speaking of Gemara, just speaking of Gemara, there's a for anybody who's interested. There is a uh, document that I have over here called How to H- Helping Your Son to Succeed in Gomorrah, which is about five. So for parents who have kids who are in school or in high school and they are challenged by Gomorrah, this is a very, very important document with very pointers, practical pointers on how parents can help their kids succeed with Gomorrah, uh, which is a very big challenge. It constantly happens in many, many homes. and. Uh, if anybody's interested, you could get this from me. It's not available in uh, in in uh, in, uh, in a hard copy. It's only available if you if you email me at David B. Kaplan at gmail.com, David B. Kaplan, and I'll have this if you want if you're interested in it. I highly recommend it because it's one of the biggest causes of frustration and uh, kids struggling with their Yiddishkeit is when they don't succeed at Gemara. And with a few easy a few easy pointers over here, could turn everything around. That is as far as the Gemara. Now the Gemara says the, that, that Korach came to Moshe Rabbeinu and they said to Moshe Rabbeinu two clay. They said a house full, they said a, 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 what do you call it? They said a, 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 a garment that is completely treles. Let's say you have a garment that's completely blue. Does it need a string of tzitzis blue on it or not? And if you tell me it does, that's ridiculous, right? Why, 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 why would it need, if, 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 if a, a white garment is taken care of with one blue string, so if a garment is completely blue, why would it need a blue string? And then he said to him, a house that's full of svarim. You have a house full of svarim. Does it need a mezuzah? And if you tell me it needs a mezuzah, that's ridiculous. A house that doesn't have any svarim, one little parchment on the wall takes care of it, so why would a house full of svarim need a mezuzah that has two paragraphs of the Torah? So, first of all, you see three things over here. Number one, he wasn't waiting for an answer. Sometimes there are questions which are statements. Because Korach didn't ask him and ask for an answer. He said, does it need or not? And if you tell me it does, right? So he wasn't, he was, he was, he was it was a statement in question form. And number two, it was an attempt to show how righteous he is. See, well, I'm a from guy, I'm asking all sorts of from questions, right? I'm all L'shem Shemayim over. Whenever anybody's L'shem Shemayim, this one, you got to be careful. Right, be really careful when somebody's a shame shemaim. Then, they, then goodness knows what's going to happen. So they they once came to uh, uh, what do you call it? They came to uh, the Satmar of Rebiol from Satmar. So these activists, they're involved in some sort of project. So Rebiol from Satmar funded a lot of things. He gave a well out of stuff because these activists had an idea for a project. So they said we need this and this amount of money. And so Rebiol from Satmar said, "What about you guys? How much do you guys want?" They said, "Us? No, no, we're the shame shemaim." So if you all forget, say, shame, shame, forget about it. That for sure I can't afford. Right? That's going to cost me a pile. Right? So if it's a shame, shame, it's going to cost. In the end, it's going to cost me. Korach is trying to show how from he is, but at a deeper level, what's he really saying to Moshe Rabbeinu? What's he really saying to Moshe Rabbeinu? A house full of svarim. Why do you need a mezuzah? A garment that's all tchelis. Why do you need one string? What's he really saying? What's he really saying? Why do we need a Moshe Rabbeinu? Why does one have to stand out? Why do you have to stand out? We're all holy. We're all, holy. We're all a house full of swarm. We're all a garment. Why does one guy have to stand out? Isn't it interesting? That's, his, that's what he's really getting at with this question. Why do you have to stand out? Ironically, even though he was the one who wants to stand out. Right? It's okay. If the, nobody should stand out unless it's me who stands out. Right? That, that's, his, that's his argument. By the way, I just want to show you something very quickly. Turn to Pesach Vav for a second. I want to show you something fascinating. On page 822, it says, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, we're going to have a test. 822, second line from the top. He says, Zosasu, this is what you should do. Kichulachem machtos, take fire pans. 
Korach the Chol Adoso. Korach and the entire congregation. And he's going to go on to describe, we're going to put in Ketoros, we're going to have a showdown. But there's a very, very strange Rashi here. If you take a look at Rashi, it's, uh, uh, Rashi is in the right column, five lines from the bottom. Look at Rashi. Rashi says, Machtos. First Rashi tells what the contest is going to be. And then Rashi throws in a technical point. Right column, five lines from the bottom. Everybody say, if you see it, find it, show the person next to you. Machtos. Kalim shechosim em gecholim. These are utensils that you use to, to shovel the coals. The Yeshla and Beis Yad, they have a handle. Now, we've had machtos before in the Torah, and Rashi never defines what machtos are. doesn't tell us about it. And all of a sudden, Rashi gives us a, a lesson in housewares. Oh, machtos. First he tells us what the kind of thing. He says, oh, you know what a macht is? By the way, it's a, thing, a type of shovel type of thingy. They use the shovel coals, and it's got a handle. I certainly hope it has a handle. I mean, I'd hate to hold, hold on to a thing that doesn't have a handle you're shoveling hot coals with. Okay. So what, why, are you, why is Rashi giving me a lesson in house words over here? So I think what Rashi is telling you is that Moshe Rabbeinu was really responding to Korach. Moshe Rabbeinu was saying to Korach, you're coming to me and telling me why does something have to stick out? Why does one person have to be outstanding? Even on a fire pan, it has to have a handle. Everything, you have to have somebody who's the leader. In all situations, you have somebody who's the leader. And by the way, Korach, I got news for you. You think being leaders, leadership is so good. When you're a leader, you serve the people. That's what your job is, like a handle on a fire pan. The handle is to serve the fire pan. But Rashi goes and tells you a technical detail, which I don't need, and he didn't bother saying it, because that's what's really underlying what Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to Korah. Hey, take a fire pan, fellas. Take an example from a fire pan. And you have to remember, Korach, all along, Moshe Rabbeinu is giving him time, chance after chance after chance to back out of all this. This is folly. I'm giving you a chance to get out of it. And the Korach doesn't back out, and eventually he has his free choice taken away. And that's why eventually he doesn't back out at the last second. We'll see. Now, let's go back to what we asked yesterday. Korach says everybody's holy. The Gemara says that they said Moshe Rabbeinu is involved with a married woman. I mean, of all the, we said yesterday, of all the ridiculous claims, I mean, how, how, would, how, would, how would, you know, not only that, picture Korach coming up to somebody and the Jewish people. The Jewish people have been with Moshe all along. Picture somebody coming, Korach coming up to somebody and saying, oh, by the way, you know, I, I think Moshe Rabbeinu is involved with married women. The guy would have decked them. Like, Get out of here. What are you talking about? <laughs> so what's going on here? So Korach has a problem. Well, what did George Orwell say? All men are equal, but some are created more equal than others. Right? So, right, so... Isn't it, wasn't that correct? Well, yeah, all are equal, some Not all animals are equal. He didn't say all animals. He said all men are equal. But he didn't say all animals are equal. That, 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 that much I was in class for. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, you know, and I remember there was a book called Animal Farm. Right? The, 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 uh, the, what do you call it? He, 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 I don't think that it could be you're right. I mean, if I had a bet, I'd bet I knew before I bet on me. But whatever it is, Korach has a problem. He's saying well, everybody's holy. The only problem is we know everybody's holy, but some people are holier than others. And if he asked the Jewish people, you know, they would say to Korach, you're right, we're all holy, but let's face it, none of us is Moshe Rabbeinu. None of us is Moshe Rabbeinu. He's got a problem. He's got a problem. His problem is, you know, the people know that Moshe Rabbeinu was on a mountain for 40 days and didn't eat and drink. They know he's separated from his wife. They know his face is glowing. They know that he's Moshe Rabbeinu. There's something that he's got to do to make a chink in the armor in Moshe Rabbeinu's armor. So what does he do? The best thing is start a rumor. Just start a rumor. Nowadays, we've seen this. All you got to do is start a rumor on the internet, right? Start a rumor. There may be nothing to it. There's no truth to it whatsoever, but you've tarnished a person's reputation. You've already, so all Torah's got to do is start like a rumor, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu and married women. Now, I don't believe that Korach went and just started a rumor. I believe that what happened was that one day after davening, Korach was probably in the back table taking off his tefillin, and he turned to the guy next to him. He says, hey, you know, hey, Moish, can I talk to you for a second? You know, I, I don't want to say anything. I'm not, I'm not saying it. You, you know, forget it. I, I can't even say this, you know. I don't know. I, you know, yesterday, you know, I saw yesterday, you know, I, forgive me. I don't mean this, by the way. I'm just telling you because I think I, it's a mitzvah. It's a toeless. I am only saying it for a beneficial purpose. Yesterday, I was walking by Moshe Rabbeinu's tent, and I saw a woman went in with, you know, she had a question on a pot. I know that, you know, forgive me for saying this, 
But this woman walked in there, and it just seemed to me like, you know, just a little longer, you know, never mind, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you never know, forget, I didn't say anything. I, I, I can't believe that, it, well, I can't believe I even said it. Now, there's always that third guy at the back table who's wrapping his fill-in, who's pretending not to listen, right? Yeah, and he's hearing every word, right? And, he can't, and he's like, and he's wrapping it over and over, like, he's wrapping it a few times, you know, like, oh, this is juicy. Yeah, he's always, or there's one of the, you know, one of the Hasidic guys is there, you know, you know, furiously twir twirling his, twirling his payas, you know, while, he, while he's waiting, and he can't wait to say, hey, five more, keep my head, <laughs> you know, I got some news for you. And all of a sudden, words start spreading about Moshe Rabbeinu and women. I don't believe that Korach went and did it blank because nobody would have listened. Number one. Number two, let's take it to a deeper level. What is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's, the metaphorical relationship between Hashem and the Jewish people? Husband, husband and a wife. Now Korach is really protected. He can come up to somebody and say, hey Moshe, you know what? Why did Moshe Rabbeinu take a married woman? And Moshe says, what are you, would you watch your mouth? And he goes, I didn't mean really. I meant metaphorically, Hashem is the husband, Klai Yisrael is the wife, why did Moshe Rabbeinu take over the wife? But the third guy at the table didn't hear that. He doesn't know that. He's just like, Moshe Rabbeinu took a wife. Next thing you know, there's a, and Moshe Rabbeinu's aura is, is, is broken. They have chipped through that aura of Kedusha invincibility. That's what Torah, Korach's plan is. So Korach starts this rumor in order to, because otherwise, otherwise it's not a level playing field. So he levels the playing field. That's what the Gorah means. So everybody said, uh-oh, watch your wives, guys. Guys, watch your wife from Moshe Rabbeinu. There are Mephorshim that say that the women themselves were always talking about Moshe Rabbeinu. The women were talking about Moshe Rabbeinu, the leader Moshe, the leader Moshe. Women sense who's what's right. So since the women were always talking about it, the men were like, well, what do you, what do you, what's up with Moshe Rabbeinu over here? Why do you sign a Moshe Rabbeinu kick? Right? But that's, a, that's not, I think that it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's much more that Korach has to get something accomplished. Now, take a look. In, 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 we're, we're in Pusuk, uh, Pusuk Hay. So, uh, where it's, Vaidabri uh, korach vel kolados oleimor. He says to Korach in his entire congregation, Boker in the morning, tomorrow morning, the Yoda Hashem es asher lo ves hakodosh. Hashem will make you know who's his and who's the Holy One. The hikri velov and he'll draw him near. Ves kol asher yivchar bo yakri velov. And anybody that he chooses he'll draw near. So he emphasizes the word near twice. Gentlemen, look at the word Korach. Rearrange the letters of Korach. What do you get? Near. Boker. Boker. What else? Boker. Rochok. Rochok. Hashem will, tell you, Hashem will tell you who he's drawing near. Guess what, Korach? It's not you. You're Rochok. Even more than that. Even more than that. This is the real irony. What does Korach want to be? He wants to be the coin oh. Godel. Right? Now, how did Aaron become the coin Godel? How did Aaron become the coin Godel? He had smicha? No, no, I don't mean it technically. Why did he qualify the, to be God? Because he, not he helped him out. Not he helped him out. He was, he was happy for Moshe. When Moshe Rabbeinu, when Shem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I want you to be the leader, Moshe said, please, not me. Let my older brother do it. And Moshe was implying he's going to be jealous. He was the leader until now. Who was leading the Jewish people Why Moshe Rabbeinu was in Midian all those years? Aaron was the Navi. He was the leader in Egypt. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, I go to Rucho, don't send me, my brother's the leader. And now he's the older brother. He'll be jealous if I have this. Hashem says, no, he won't. Moshe Rabbeinu says, Aaron's going to come, he's going to see you, and he's going to rejoice in his heart. He's going to be happy for your success. So then Aaron comes, and because he rejoices, what does Aaron get? The Torah, the Gemara says that in, because he rejoiced in his heart, he merited to wear the chest plate that goes over the heart. The chest plate's the most prominent feature of the if you on Purim, if you've seen little from kids, you had a lot of coin guttles running around on Purim. Then you see that? And they've all got they've all got the chest plate. That's the most prominent feature of the coin guttle. Why did Aaron merit that? Because he had such a good heart, he was happy for his younger brother Moshe Rabbeinu. Oh. So what do you need to qualify to be coin guttle? You need to not be jealous. What's Korach? Korach is jealous. That means by definition he's not qualified. There are certain things in life that's frustrating. There are certain things in life you can't ask for. You can't ask somebody to give you a birthday present. Then it's not a birthday present. Right? You can't ask for a present. Right? You can't ask for a present. And not only that, sometimes, sometimes somebody will say to you, listen, if you don't ask, I'll give it to you. But if you ask, you're not getting it. Right? You see, you're like, mm. you know, so you just kind of walk past your uncle. You keep walking back and forth because you know that. If, but, but if you ask him, you know your uncle's not going to give it to you. 
So you're like, mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm not asking. I'm not asking. I'm not, sorry, <laughs> that's asking. You're disqualified. You understand the frustration over here? You qualify if you're not jealous. Okay, I'm not jealous, but I am. <laughs> you are. That, that's the problem. So Korach is already rochok. Okay? Now, uh, they're going to have this contest. And uh, uh, ra look at Rashi over here. Rashi says, um, where is it? Um, here, take a look at uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the right column, third line from the top in Rashi. Umedrosho. What did he mean when he said, in the morning, Hashem will, know, Hashem will let you know? Says Rashi, Umedrosho, Boker. What did he mean when he said Boker? Amar le'em Moshe, Gevulos chalak ha-kodesh v'orchu ba'olamo. Hashem made boundaries in his world. Yecholem atem lafoch boker la'erev. Can you change morning into night? Kein tochu levatel ezeh. Korach, his claim was, Moshe Rabbeinu, you made this up on your own. All these appointments, you took it for yourself, you got your brother, and, uh, you, it was all done on your own. Moshe Rabbeinu says if this, if Korach is threatening this, he's threatening the entire, in, the entire existence of the, the authenticity. He's, he's threatening the entire authenticity of Torah. Because if he's saying, I made this up, he can tell you, say, I made up the entire Torah. That's why this is so crucial that there's going to be a public demonstration that it's not, not like that. So Moshe Rabbeinu says to Korach, this is no, he says, Boker, in the morning, we'll all see. But Rashi quotes the Medrash that he was saying, the same way you can't change morning to night, you can't change this. This is coming from God, no different than that. So one of the first him says what he was really getting at is, morning is always associated, daylight, morning is associated with the sun. Nighttime is associated with the moon. The relationship between the sun and the moon is the same relate is one is the giver and one's the receiver. Right? Which is the giver? Obviously the sun. The moon is receiving from the sun. In the Jewish people, you have the rabbi and you have the people, the students. You have the Rebbe and you have the Talmud. In other areas of Jewish people, you have the Kohanim and you have the rest of the people. The Kohanim are the Mashpia, they're the sun, they're the ones who are giving over. The ultimate one is the Kohen Goro. The people are the receivers. Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to Korach, Korach, you're good, but you're a receiver right now. The same way you can't change the function of morning and night, you can't turn the sun into a receiver. The sun's a giver. It's a mashpia. And the moon is a receiver. Then you are a receiver right now. You're not going to be. You can't change it. This is from Hashem's plan. It's not something that I did. I had nothing to do with this. This had nothing to do with me. This is all coming from the Rebbe Shop. And you got about as much chance of changing it as you do of changing the sun into the moon. That's what he means by boker. That's what he means by boker. Now, if you take a look, Look at Pasuk, uh, Pasuk Zion. Moshe Rabbeinu says, uh, take, take these fire pans and put in the Ketores. Third line from the top, 822. Put fire in them. Put fire in them. The Hoya Haisha Shayiv Khar Hashem Hua Kodosh. When Hashem chooses, he's he's the Holy One. Rav Lochem Bene Levi. Now, what does he mean when he says Rav Lochem Bene Levi? So how does the Arab school translate it? Uh, it is too much for you, O oh, offspring of Levi. Right? It's too much for you. Rav Lochem. So the uh, 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 the basic idea over here is that Moshe Rabbeinu is saying to them that you've got a position already that you never complained about. You've got a nice position. Korach, you never complained. When we appointed you as a levy, that you didn't complain about originally. Then you weren't, then you weren't complaining, hey, it's not evenly distributed, it's not fair. Sure, because you, you've got the, the appointment. Now you want more, you're taking off, you're biting off more than you could chew. Now, ironically, Moshe Rabbeinu is going to be punished for this. Where's the punishment? Take a look at Pasha's Dvarim. In, Pasha, in Pasha's Dvarim, take a look at Gimel Chavvav in, pa, in Pasha's Dvarim. When Hashem, when Moshe Rabbeinu is begging to go into the land of Eretz Yisrael. So look what he says. Gimel Chavvav. What page is it? Nine. 958. Yes. Uh, nos. 
Nine. No. No, 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 not 958. 954. 954. No, I lied. You're right. 958. It's in Vezchanan. Why do I have what did I say? Gimel Chav Vav. Oh, I messed up bad. Gimel Chav Vav. Yes. 958. 958. My bad, my bad. Gimel Chav Vav. Page 958. This is Moshe Rabbeinu is begging to go into the land of Israel. Now look what the Pesach says here. It's six lines from the top. Hashem was angry at me. He was... He was tough with me because of you. Vayomer Hashem Eli Ravlach, enough. Al Tosef Daber Eli Od Badover Azet. Don't speak to me anymore about this matter. You're not going into Eretz Israel. Now you notice that the expression Hashem says Ravlach, enough. And what does he say? What does Moshe Rabbeinu say to the Bnei Levi? Ravlachem. So Rashi says over here, oh, that that that. What do you call it? Where does, it, where, where does it say it? Oh, he says it over here in the Dvarim. And Pesach uh, Chavav. Ravloch! Where does Rashi bring it down? In the left column, four lines. Left column, four lines. Uh, Ravlochem. Uh-huh. Where are you reading? In 958. Oh, in 958. Yeah, no, no, but it, the, the, so, so it's the Chazal. The, the, the Chazal say, the, the Moshe Rabbeinu, because it's the Gemara brings I thought Rashi brings it. The Gemara brings out, Moshe Rabbeinu, because you spoke to them with this ter- ter- terminology, you're going to be addressed with that terminology also. In other words, you're punished. When you spoke to the B'nai Levi in an insensitive way, therefore, when, when I'm telling you what, what, what you're going you're, to be deprived of, I'm also going to speak in an insensitive way. So you, the same way you said them, Rav Lachem, so then I coach Baruch Hu and he says to Moshe Rabbeinu, enough, I don't want to hear from it. What's the obvious question? He did, he did, like, Korah did, did something wrong. You're obvious, you got it, you got it. What do you call it? Why, why are you, you know, what, what are you taking them to task for? What do you do wrong over here? I told everybody. I, 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 what am I supposed to do? Let them go ahead with it? So we learned two lessons over here. Number one, number one, uh, 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 that, that, why was that his first reaction? Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu said, well, let me see if HaKadosh Baruch Hu will allow for, for, us to, for two Kohen Gadols. In other words, the first reaction of a Jew should be, shouldn't be no. First reaction should be, let's see if I can accommodate you somehow. So most or less, the easiest word in the world is to say no. Maybe Moshe Rabbeinu, maybe he could have been a little softer. Why did he have to start out with a no? Okay, so you see, you see, good. Now you're strengthening the argument. You see how you see how accommodating you have to be in life. It's only no when it's a really a no. A Jew doesn't say no. A Jew says yes. I learned this. I learned this once from my father, Olav Shalom. When when my 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 first my oldest two nephews, one was about four, the other one was about three and a half, something like that, to a five. They were at my father's house. I didn't I didn't have kids yet. My parents, they, my oldest two nephews were there. So they said, Zadie, they said, Zadie, can we jump up and down on the couch? So what does he do? He says, just one second. So my father took the couch and he turned it against the wall so that the wall's protecting on one side, the back of the couch on the other side. And then they got on and started jumping up and down on the couch. So I said, Dad, why, uh, why are you letting them jump on the couch? Why, why'd, you, why'd, you say, why'd you do that? He says, why should I say no if I could say yes? I, I mean, when I was a kid, Believe me, there, were, there was no couch turning on, on the wall, you know. <laughs> you, 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 you get crazy when it's with grandchildren, you know, things, every, everything changes with grandchildren. You know, with grandchildren it changes. Okay, but the rule is, if it could be a yes, make it a yes, don't make it a no. If you're driving your car and you pass by a bus stop and there are people waiting, stop the car and see if anybody needs a ride. Why, why, why are you driving past? Maybe they near. What do we think they're doing at the bus stop? It's a community meeting? And what, what are they doing at the bus stop? You know, what do you think they're doing? Well, no, they don't want to drive in a, in a comfortable air-conditioned car. They'd much rather be on a crowded, hot bus with an Arab bus driver, for sure. No, no question about it. Why, why do you, why, why, that's a stop. It's always easy. It's always easy to say no. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I heard from Rav Lef Shlita, he said, they could have misinterpreted. When Moshe Rabbeinu said, Rav Lechem, enough! They might have thought, enough of work on my spiritual growth. 
they might have misinterpreted, okay, that's all, we, we, we've basically peaked out in our growth. And that's a dangerous thing to say to somebody. You have to draw a balance between being satisfied, you can be happy with your accomplishment, but don't be complacent because of your accomplishments. A person should take pride and you should be happy about your accomplishments in life. Whether it's in Torah, whether it's with money, whether it's with any talents that you have, you should be happy, you should be proud of yourself, but don't become complacent. And a person says, wow, wow, I, you know, I know how to learn Tosfos. Good, you should be very happy you know how to learn Tosfos. But don't stop there, continue going. That's not an end, that's, yeah, but don't become complacent, number one. Number two, there's something very, very annoying habit that people tend to have. If you notice in Pesach tests, Moshe Rabbeinu used a very interesting it's a, it's insight into human nature. Hama'at mikem, is it not enough? Ki hivdil elokei Yisrael eschem e'adas Yisrael lahakri v'eschem It's not enough that you were separated? Lavodas avodas mishkan Hashem v'lamod lifteid l'shem It's not enough for you that you were, you, you were, you were separated out to be, to be Lviv? To be, that's not enough for you now. Much of it could have turned around and said, ah, oh, what are you pursuing honor for? Honor is empty. There's nothing there. It's all an illusion. Right? Could have said that. He could have said that. There are very few things as irritating in life as when somebody who's got something tells you, but it's not that great. When a guy comes driving in with a Lamborghini and you're ogling his Lamborghini, because your Honda, your four-year-old Honda Accord uh, is, is having some issues, you know, and you go, wow, that's a nice car. No, nah, it ain't all that great. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, then how come you got one, right? And would you like to trade with me? No, that, no. Okay? And the guy says, hey, listen, kid, money isn't everything. You know, money is, it doesn't make you happy. Oh, yeah, I don't see you giving it away, multi-billionaire. Right? Where, where, yeah, if it, it's, it's very frustrating to hear something. Somebody's got, a lot of, somebody's got a lot of honor or prestige, and he says, listen, honor doesn't mean anything, kid. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I, let's uh, see if they take away your honor, what would happen? So Moshe Rebbe doesn't do that. He doesn't say, hey, guys, you're pursuing a futile. Moshe Rebbe says, hey, you've got honor. He didn't, he didn't deny the honor. He says, yeah, you've got honor. You're Levium. Very important, very important psychologically. Listen, because if you say to him, well, listen, honor is not that great. Oh, yeah, Moshe Rabbeinu, it's easy for you to talk. You've got the honor. You've got the honor. It's very easy for you to talk. That's why it's always, so Moshe, number one, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't do that. Number two, he destroys Korach's argument here. I'll get to you one second, Bear. He destroys Korach's argument that he made it all up. Korach says that you made up, you made everything. Yeah, how come you didn't say that earlier? You didn't, you didn't say that earlier when I pointed you Levium. Then you didn't say I made everything up. So you're caught in the catch-20 Korach. You're caught in, the, in constant contradictions, constant self-contradictions. Yeah, what are you going to have? I just wanted to ask, uh, I mean, first Korach tells to Moshe, Rav Lachem, and then he is neg nidak, neg nidak. He responds the same way to Korach, and then Hashem applies to him nidak and neg nidak. Korach's got bigger problems. Mm -hmm. Korach's yeah, got a bigger problem. The size problems. of all the other problems. Yeah, Korach's got a bigger problem. The problem for Moshe is that... Uh, Like also Hashem will actually yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we are measured. The Gemara says that Hashem holds tzaddikim up to uh, to the nth to the to the nth degree. For a slip, of, if somebody asks a question, somebody, uh, what's your name again? Luke. Yeah, Avadi. Avadi has a good question. He said Moshe Rabbeinu had to say them. I mean, he, he's trying to put down a rebellion over here. Yeah, but even then, when you're a tzaddik, we got to watch every word that you say. At our level, if you have an argument with your wife or your neighbor and you're yelling at each other, you know, that we understand that, that sometimes you say, yeah, but at Moshe Rabbeinu's level, okay, Rabbi Lachem, shouldn't say it right, right, ah, you slip. That slip was a slip. You should have had that much level of control. That's the a, that's a standard he's held to. Okay, yeah, very quickly. Uh, how does this, I understand this argument against the Levites, but how does this argument respond to the Reubenites that were also part of the rebellion? They're even worse. Yeah. They're even worse. Because the Reubenites, you see what happens, we're going to see later on, that, 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 that Dustin and Aviram are, are even worse than Korach. Korach, we can at least understand what you're, what you're fetching about. The, 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 the Reuven, what do you want, what are you getting involved with him becoming the Kohen Gola? Right now they're not arguing to be the Bechors anymore. They're still on his side that we, he should be the Kohen or the Kohen Gola, whatever it is. That's worse. When you're the guy involved is one thing. To jump into the argument, well, then hockey, if you're the third guy in, you get a, you get a game misconduct, right? 
third guy into the fight gets a game. The two guys who are fighting, they just get a penalty. Third guy in and out of the game. Why? What are you getting involved for? How did you get involved in this argument? You're the worst guy. You're, you're the guy who's egging everybody on. You, I understand. What are you getting involved for? So in a certain way, Dustin and Aviram are even worse than Korach. Let's see. What's that? What's that? What's that? Okay, now. Moshe Rabbeinu reaches out to Dustin and Aviram. We learn over here how a person is supposed to behave when there's a fight. The first thing is that Moshe Rabbeinu, number one, he deals with Korach first. Then he deals with Dustin and Aviram, which, by the way, there's a rule. When you're dealing with a group of unhappy people, try to split them up. Don't deal with the whole group. Get this guy alone and get this guy alone. Get to, you can do much more when you got the whole group. They have the, their strength in numbers. So he, he what do you call it? He, he, calls, uh, uh, Dustin, he calls to Dustin and Aviram, and he's, and he's what do you call it? He says, uh, uh, four lines from the Yishlach Moshe likro le Dustin v'Avirim b'nei Eliyav. Moshe sends, he humbles them, but he can't go to them. He sends to them and says, come on, guys, let's talk it over, but he's a king. Well, he's a king. A king has a limit on what, how much you can humble yourself. Moshe has the status of a king. So he can reach out to them, but he can't go to them. He says, come to me. Vayomru lo nale. They said, no, 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 we're not coming up. And then they got the chutzpah, they got the chutzpah to say, you took us out of a land of milk and honey. Oh yeah, I mean, Egypt was just, just a party. Right? It just, it was just, it just, just happy as a lark, right? And now you're going to lord yourself over us. So, at that point, Moshe Rabbeinu gets very upset. And Moshe Rabbeinu says, Vayichar le Moshe Ma'od, Vayomer el Hashem, second line from the top, Al tefen el min chosem, don't turn to their offering. Lo chamor echad mehem nosasi, v'lo ariosi es echad I'm not going to tell you guys an important life rule. Moshe Rabbeinu says, don't turn to them. And he's obviously calling his own merit into account. He says, I never took a donkey from them, and I never hurt any one of them. Now, if you were Moshe Rabbeinu, and you want a Kodesh Baruch Hu to listen to you, what would you have said about yourself? I would have said, hey, I've been a servant of yours. I split the sea. I was up there for 40 days trying to learn Torah. I did a whole bunch of stuff. What does Moshe Rabbeinu say? Don't listen to them. You know why? Because I never even took a donkey from them. I never even took a wedding call from them. Hold for a few minutes. I never took a donkey. I never took anything. Why is Moshe Rabbeinu citing that? In other words, Moshe Rabbeinu is trying to mention what merit he has in this fight that Hashem should listen to him and not them. So what does he cite as a merit? I mean, if I was Moshe Rabbeinu, the first thing I would have said is, listen, I, I, you know, I was willing to go into Paro with, with, with uh, you know, because you told me to go. And I was willing to, and I, 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 I beat up the, I killed the Egyptian that was beating the Jew. And I did this and that and the other. There's a whole list of things that Moshe Rabbeinu did. What's Moshe Rabbeinu? Don't listen to them. I got a big merit over. I never took a donkey. I never took a wedding call. So the rule here is, hold the question, hold the question, guys. The rule is that Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us a life rule. How do you measure your real level? How does a person measure their real level in life? Your real level is not measured by big dramatic things that you do. That's not your real level. You get scar for that. Imagine a guy just dives into the water and you save somebody who's drowning. You get reward for that. That's not your real level. It's not who the real you is. The real you, your measure, your level is measured by the little things. You say good morning to your parents when you get up in the morning. You prepare a cup of coffee for your wife. Do you say good morning to the bus? Are you not, do you daven regularly in shul? Do you put on tefillin? Do you put on tzitzit? That's what I want. I want to see the consistency. I want to see the little things. The big things, big dramatic things like splitting the sea. That's not your real level. Moshe Rabbeinu says, my real, here's my real, look at who I am. I never even took a donkey from them. That's what a person indicates the real level. The real level, sometimes a person wants to, who am I really? Not who am I really, who am I, by the way, the question of who am I, which we grapple with, especially young people, who am I? Am I the guy who's like, sometimes I feel really from, yet at night I find myself in a club, right? So which one is really me, you know? Am I the guy who davens with kavan and closes my eyes at l'chad dodi, 
or am I the guy who the next day is doing cocaine? Which one? Which one? Which one am I? Right? You, well, you can do both at the same time. That's usually that's usually the way it is. Right? Who who am I really? People grapple with this all the time. Am I that from guy? Am I the guy who's giving and everything else, or am I the guy who's really really selfish? Gentlemen, put away all the technology while you're in this year. If you can either use the technology outside, not not in this year. Okay, it's disrespectful to the Torah. So if, if a person grapples with who am I really? And the answer is, you don't have to answer that question. You am, at every moment, what you should be doing. That means, if right now I'm supposed to be davening, that's who you am. And if that night you're in a club, that's, that's also who you am. Right? You don't have to have a definition. You're doing the wrong thing at that point. If at that point you're doing the wrong thing, so then that's who you am. Or that's who you are, as the case may be. Right? But at the end of the day, you don't have to have a, there's no one that says you have to have to define that. But if you want to know what your level is, your level is how you behave on the little things, not on the big things. All the big dramatic things, helping a little old lady cross the street, assuming she wants to cross. And, and uh, what do you call it? Yeah, you know, doing the big thing. Well, you know, the big things, that's a one-off. You get reward for that, but that doesn't define who you are. First, that sometimes people do with big mitzvahs. So sometimes you do something even nobody else sees. You're on the train, or you're on the bus, and you give up your seat to somebody, and you're like looking around. Does anybody realize what a tzaddik I am? Anybody, this tzaddik business isn't so difficult. Look at that. Yesterday I gave up my seat on the bus. The day before I visited, the day before I was, uh, you know, I saw some kid on the street crying, so I bought him a popsicle. You know, it's me and the Chafetz Chaim. I mean, we're, you know, you know. No, 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 no. It's, it's 95 years of consistently doing that. It's not a one-off. You get a schar, it's a mitzvah, it's a terrific thing. But Moshe Rabbeinu says, hey, you know who I really am? Even Moshe Rabbeinu, what do you think of Moshe Rabbeinu? What do you think of? <laughs> you know, the, yeah, drama. And everybody says, who I really am. I'm the guy who never took advantage of my position on the people. That's the guy who I really am. Okay? Tomorrow we'll see about what, what it means to be swallowed up and why one should avoid it at all costs.